다시 합시다. <웃음> 네. 자, 그래서 여러분들 이제 그 조인트 하는 거를 이제 매니퓰레이션이라고 하거든요. or editing 3D geometry. So I will uh, introduce how to edit uh, your 3D model very easily. Uh, in case your 3D model doesn't work, meaning that doesn't really um, assembled well. 자, 이거 조인트 안될때 어떻게 하는지를 가르쳐 줄 건데 오늘 배울 게 뭐냐면 요 그래스하퍼라는 거예요. 화면 공유를 할게요. So what I'm going to show you is so-called grasshopper. 네, 이제 보이죠? So grasshopper is a visual programming language uh, which is even if you don't know how to program it, you can, uh, this is kind of almost like a computer program like a feature in Rhino 3D. And many software has actually this feature, uh, but I don't really think uh, SolidWorks, SolidWorks do not have this one. So you cannot really use SolidWorks for, so this is called design automation. So here, what I'm showing you here is that if I move around this slide, as you see that this one is kind of become narrower and wider. So now you probably see that this one is changing. So, you don't really need to 3D model at all. Once you have this, this one, you can just slide it and you can uh, just simply uh, change the size of joint by sliding this icon. 이해 되죠? 별로 어려운 건 없어요. So, so uh, today I will explain how to use this feature. And then, or you, and then after that, you once you change that, if I kind of go through the overall process, so this geometry, you can think of it as a variable. So each, uh, each geometry, so the first geometry has this first two points of a geometry, your two get point through 갖고 있고요. 그러니까 저장해 놓는 variable 같은 거예요. 여러분들 다 프로그래밍 인트로덕션 들었죠? You are finished introductory programming course. 1학년 때, 그죠? 다 들었죠? Yeah, so I think variable is easy concept for you. So the next geometry has this point, and the third geometry has these two points. So now there is so-called move function. So move function has as geometry and motion are required as two inputs of this function. And then move has actually unit X. Unit X means it only move X axis only. Therefore, there probably unit Y and unit Z or unit X, Y or unit, there are many uh, related function. And then negative, and then I here is actually slide bar. Slide bar basically offer you number between zero and one. 요거는 방향은 얼마든지 바꿔도 돼요. 요거는 10을 만약에 엔터 치고 하면 요거는 자동적으로 생기는 거고 요거는 나중에 한번 더 설명을 해줄게요. So there's a slide bar will provide a number between zero and one. You can change any time the range of it. And then here 여기서는 0에서 1, 1mm 정도면 충분해요. 이거 수정하는데 그래서 그냥 1로 한 거고. 근데 지금 보면 이게 지금 0에서 1인데 지금 여기서 X가 움직여야 될 부분은 마이너스 방향으로 움직이거나 플러스 방향으로 해야 되잖아요. 그래서 요거는 어려울 게 없는 게더 늘리고 싶으면 마이너스 방향이고 줄이고 싶으면 마이너스 방향인데 요 네거티브를 쓸 수도 있고 여기 실제로 그냥 요 슬라이드 바의 레인지를 어, 밸류를 미니멈을 어, 여기서 이 마이너스 원에서 플러스 1까지로 바꿔버리고 그냥 커밋 해버리면 1에서 마이너스 1까지 되죠. 그래서 이거 사실은 없어도 돼요. 그래서 이거 그냥 연결하면 여기 지금 1에서 마이너스 1까지로 여러분 왔다 갔다 하는 건 보이죠. 저희 왔다 갔다 하면 so it will offer a number between, uh, between minus 1 to 1 and then this unit X only offer a vector that move minus one to plus one. And then based on this unit 
vector, this move function will move the to the single line here. And then this one comes into polyline. 여러분 기억나죠? So now I hope you remember when you create a series geometry, you are going to start from point and polyline. And then we extrude those polyline. And then 이제 여기 그 extrude인데 우리 지난번에 옵션에서 then I, I hope you still remember that in the option we actually activate the cap option so close it but this one does not have that option so we need to use additional a function which is cap holes meaning that it will actually close it. 요 순서 잠깐 설명을 한번 더 해주자면 요 지오메트리가 포인트를 다 갖고 있고 지금 여기 unit x랑 move를 요두 개만 사용을 해서 왔다 갔다 하고 있고요. 그리고 이 폴리라인은 이거 이제 그 크로스트 아웃라인을 만들어내고 익스트루드는 이거 20cm 익스트루드 시켜서 캡은 이제 뚜껑을 닫아주는 거예요. 3D 프린트 할수 있게. 그리고 이거까지는 이제 비주얼라이제이션이고 이걸 이제 3D 프린터로 쓰기 위해서는 이걸 이제 베이크라는 거를 해야 돼요. 그래서 베이크를 하게 되면 어, 여러분이 원하는 레이어에 베이크를 할 수가 있거든요. 그래서 레이어를 선택하고 베이크를 누르면 여기 보시면 여기 그 폴리 서피스라는 게 하나 생겼죠. 여기 뭐냐면 이제 이게 베이크드 된 거예요. 이왜 베이크드는 왜 나오냐면 프로그램 상에서는 지오메트리가 항상 바뀔 수 있잖아요. 근데 최종적으로 내가 쓸 거는 베이크드를 시켜야 최종적으로 결과가 잠깐 이제 멈춰지는 거예요. 그러면 여러분들은 요거를 이제 3D 프린트에 쓰면 돼요. 여기까지 이 혹시 어려운 거 있나요? 전 한번 제가 더쭉 한번 돌아 한번 쭉 어떻게 하는지 쭉 돌아볼 거예요. 근데 전체적인 프로세스는 뭐 그렇게 어렵진 않죠. 네, so what they are, uh, so the overall process is very simple. So I just simply create a point. Actually, I just draw basic points here, and then I save them in a variable, and then I create a, and then I just move some part of of the geometries, and I create a polyline. And then I extrude the polyline, and then I kept the holes, and I baked. So by doing so, you can actually create a 3D model. 이게 굉장히 유용해요. 여러분 그 여러분들 so if this is extremely useful. Imagine that you want to design a robot base, or a gear, or any part. There may be, there will be. Many occasions that you need to change some part of it. In that case, the conventional way of doing it is manually change everything. It'll take sometimes it'll take a day or two. Sometimes, if you're lucky, it'll take a minute or two. But it'll at least it'll take a couple of hours. But by using this kind of feature, you can change any kind of geometry in very quick uh, time. 요거를 이제 여러분들 오늘 배워볼 거예요. 네. 혹시 뭐 잠깐 요까지 질문 있는 사람. Do you have any questions so far? 네. 어, 어렵진 않죠. 혹시 이거 어, 무슨 소리야 이런 사람 있어요? <웃음> is there anyone that who think this is too difficult to understand? 이게 어, 예, 어렵지는 않아요. 이게 간단해요. 전체 따라해 보면 될것 같아요. 요거는 요거는 제가 업로드를 해 드릴 거고 I will upload this code for you so you can play with it later. However, I will start from a scratch. 근데 처음부터 다시 시작을 하도록 할게요. 요거는 세이브 잠깐 해 버리고 어 이게 어 레고 파트 1. 이거 저장할게요. 네. 다 지워 버리고 새로 시작을 합시다. 근데 기본은 여기서 시작을 해요. So the basics start from point. Um, so the assumption is that you are going to recycle. Uh, 사실은 완전히 the real base start from here. So okay, I will start even from a scratch, really from a nothing. 야, 아주 그냥 완전 스크래치부터 다시 시작할게요. 우리 그 블록 만들 때맨 처음 해야 되는 게 뭐가 있었죠? 우리 일단 점선면으로 할 거고 기본적으로 그리드 라인은 하나 있어야 되겠죠. So at least uh, always uh, or guidelines. 여러분들 최소한 가이드라인스가 하나 있을 거고 우리 그때 뭐가 있었죠? 뭐 피니시 라인 하나 정도는 두개 최소한 두 개는 
반드시 있어 줘야 돼요. 그래서 우리 가이드라인을 일단 먼저 드려 볼게요. So I first draw guidelines first. And the way how we did is simply we draw a line from zero to roughly, I just redraw it for about eight millimeter line. 다른 방법도 있어서 제가 다른 거 한번 해볼게요. So I will introduce another method today. So I just simply draw a rectangle. So from here to 80 by 80 rectangle, 80 by 80인데 이제 이거를 이제 boundary라고 그리거든요. 그러니까 우리가 만들고자 하는 적당한 크기의 사이즈. 이거 되게 중요한 게왜 그러냐면은 네, 우리가 만들고자 하는 크기는 여러분들이 알고 있어야 돼요. Uh, just let's add some dimensions. So which actually I click here. So we know that the dimension is the height is 80 millimeter. Uh, width is roughly about 80 millimeter. So when you do some physical object model making, always kind of the first thing you want to do is roughly understand the size of the model that I'm going to make. 그러니까 여러분 만들고자 하는 크기는 이제 항상 알고 있어야 돼요. 네. 그리고 요거를 어떻게 할 거냐면 이제 그리드 라인을 이제 그릴 거잖아요. So I want to draw a grid line. So what I going to, and then I know that I will draw every 20 millimeter. 아, 요거 하기 전에 우리 뭐 빠졌죠? 제일 중요한 거 하나 빠졌는데. What is missing? The zero step. Whenever you make a 3D model. 제일 처음 해야 될 거. 뭐가 있죠? 이거 항상 확인해야 돼요. 뭘까요? 여러분 단위 맞추는 거. 네, 맞아요, 맞아요. 그... 네, 단위 맞추는 거 항상 해야 돼요. 여러분, 난 20mm인 줄 알았는데 만들고 났더니 20m다. 그래서 유닛 한번 확인하고 갈게요. 그래서 so I will just double check a unit. 이거 했죠? Uh, so then I want to draw 20mm grid line. So what I want to do is I just select this one. Then I just Divide it based on 20 millimeter. Uh, divide. Ah, 요거 하기 전에 number of segment. 자, 요거를 자 divide를 할 건데 이거 뭐냐면, so divide will divide this curve. And the first question it asks you is drag sim point. A sim point 는 뭐냐면, sim point is the start point of a curve, and then actually it shows you an arrow. Icon here, meaning that this one is the start point. 자, 요, 요렇게 시작해서 하나를 이제 나눈다, 이제 요 뜻이에요. So this means that uh, the start point of a curve here, and then it will divide based on this uh, direction and enter. And number of segments. So it will actually divide based on number. However, I change it to length, uh, meaning that I will divide this one based on a length. 그러니까 거리 단위로 나누겠다라는 거예요. 그래서 나는 이거를 그 거리로 바꾸는 거를 20mm 단위로 나누겠다. 그러면 이제 20mm 단위로 점을 이제 찍어 줬죠. So this will draw a point line on a curve based on every 20mm. 이거 됐고 so then I will draw simply a curve from uh, one or one vertical line from this point to this point and another horizontal and this one is what what happened here now is that when I try attempt to click this point, this one actually automatically try to send to the center point of this curve. You got center point to the center point of this curve. So I turned off the center object snap. So I turned off the center object snap. So I turned off the center object option in the object snap. So, let, so comfortably, I can select uh, just point only. Hi, Ishan. OK. Hi. Okay. Um, so you can uh, uh, catch up the previous part using the Zoom video later. I'll probably upload it uh, at the end of today. So I just copy uh, uh, the horizontal line from original curve to the other vertical. So I just draw the grid of a, a horizontal line and then also copy enter and then select this curve and, and it's enter and then I just copy this one to another horizontal point of curve and enter to finish it. So I have a grid. So now I will just add some point that I'm going to use as a, uh, as a, 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 as a
여기다 어, 포, 포인트를 그릴 건데 요 포인트 옵션인데 여기 보면 so this is there are two point option if you click it left mouse button you can only draw a single point and terminate it automatically and then if you click this button with right mouse button you can actually you can draw multiple points of it so i just click here and then i just add one more for the negative side of it they will point out and then another way to draw this is so i just uh, another way is actually generate point by intersection curves so you will point to touch your conde i can only select points by cell pts this is the function that you can select only points so I tap cell PTS and enter and I delete it just to show how to show another way to generate uh, intersection point. So intersection point to generate 할 때는 요 curve를 다 잡아버리고 요 intersection이라고 치시면 intersect라고 치면 자동적으로 intersect된 부분은 다 만들어져요. 근데 지금 빠진 곳은 요 코너 부분이 빠져 있어서 그냥 그, 그, 어, 요거 코너 부분만 하나 그냥 그릴게요. Multiple 오른쪽 마우스 버튼으로 요거 그려서. So I will add the four corner point by clicking right mouse button of the point icon. So it will uh, it will allow me to draw multiple points. So this is the kind of like overall intersection points that I'm going to use uh, very soon. 자, 그리고 이제 그라스하퍼를 보여줄 건데, 그라스하퍼를 열기 위해서는 두 가지 방법이 있어요. So there are two ways to open grasshopper. One way is you can go to tool, and then there's a grasshopper function here. So if you just click this, it will open grasshopper. 그리고 잠깐 요 밑으로 보내버리고. 네. And then another way to open it is to simply type here grasshopper. And then you can actually open it again. And this one is called, so I'll just show you how the basic um, interfaces of Grasshopper. Your so the center area that you see some boundary area, this one is called canvas. It's just empty area, but just the developer of this uh, app or program just called it canvas. That's it. 그리고 여러분들 그, uh, 여기 보시면, if you see somewhere of the top area, you see parameters. Parameters are basically, uh, you, can understand, you can understand them as input parameters or output parameters. 그러니까 여기는 input 또는 output을 저장하는 uh, variables, you can understand them as a variables. That's something you can save them inside of these icons. Math, you can actually use a lot of mathematical function. And you can also use C Sharp and Python and Visual Basic. Uh, vb.net. So this one is actually extremely powerful. And then set, uh, you have a lot of uh, lists or arrays, those kind of data sets. And then vectors are, as you know, vectors. So x, y is the direction of it. And curve, you can create all kind of different curves here. And you can create all kind of surfaces here too. And the mesh is, uh, the difference between surface and mesh is surface in Rhino means a kind of free surface or, or nerve surface. And the mesh is, uh, is the, the definition of mesh is a kind of a plain surface, which is sometimes, in many cases, meshes are triangulated plain surface. So surface is 여러분 자유 곡선 평면이고, 메쉬는 그 여러분 삼각형으로 돼서 딱그 평면으로 만들어진 거죠. 그게 메쉬예요. And intersects offer you a lot of intersection method or boolean operation. And transform include moving or rotating, scale, those kind of things. And display actually shows you, you can change a lot of uh, display settings such as rendering or color changes. And kangaroo is actually it's a really interesting one and then you will can install many 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 other types of it's a kind of library and kangaroo is actually a physical simulation app is a well, so such as you can make a ball that actually jumping around or you can create a kind of water that flow in a kind of a contained area so this is very uh, useful tool that you can simulate it and there are tons of tons of libraries so i will explain a little bit later 
But so far, we are going to use one of these icons, but we don't really use them at all. Actually, the way how we use is uh, we are going to double click on a canvas and then we are going to search using a keyword such as, okay, I want to save a geometry, then I just type geometry. Then you will have a lot of related uh, icons uh, you can see and then among them. So when you select some geometry, read the, this orange box carefully. So if I select the first one on the bottom, it says contains a collection of generic geometry, meaning that it will save any kind of geometry inside of it. Okay, well, point in a line, in a modern, any kind of geometry can be saved here. And geometry pipeline defines a geometry pipeline from Rhino to Grasshopper. 여러분 파이프라인에 대해서 좀 익숙하지 않을 수도 있는데 파이프라인이 뭐냐면 그 이게 전달해 주는 책이에요. 여러분도 요거는 저거 그 렌더링 같은 거할때나 많이 쓰는 건데 요거 조금 나중에 설명하고. 그래서 이게 uh, you can create a here or if you want to create a point I just double click and I just type point and there are many points point related functions are here. So first point simply a variable point contains a collection of three dimensional points. 그러니까 이거는 포인트를 모을 수 있는 variable이고 포인트 리스트는 포인트를 so this is the kind of uh, displays details of a list of points. 그러니까 many, if there are many points, it will show the list of points. 어, 이런 게 있고 포인트를 사실은 만드는 게 없어요, 사실. So something interesting is there's no such a function that you can create a point. Because it's a kind of simplest form of geometry. So all you have to do is you can click, just simply click this one and then you can actually set it. I will show uh, this one a little bit later. And then if you want to draw a line, I just type line. Then the first line is actually a variable line, which line contains a collection of line segments. You want the line, 저장하는 아이콘이고. 두 번째 보면, 이거는 line을 보면, this line create verb a line between two points. 그러니까 이거는 포인트가 두개 있으면 라인을 하나 만들어 준다. 이 뜻이에요. So this is actually a kind of add line kind of similar thing. Line STL also also can create a line, but create a line segment defined by start point, tangent, and length. 그러니까 이거는 라인, so this is another way of defining line, but actually it uses it requires different types of input. Line dimension create a distance annotation along a line. You could be a line dimension, so simply shows a line dimension. So you'll have a lot of line related one here. And if you also find a surface, so you have a surface variable, this will save a surface. And also there are a lot of different way of creating surfaces here. And what I'm going to do here is showing you is that I'm going to use polyline. So polyline, Polyline. There also, if this polyline will create a polyline connecting a number of points, meaning that you need many points as an input, and then this will create a polyline based on those input. And then extrude. If you type here extrude, and then you will actually see that exclude curves and surfaces along a vector, meaning that you need either a a set of curves. Or, a, or surfaces, then if you have another input, such as a vector, then it will extrude uh, the surface. And simply cat is another function that is actually, uh, it create, it simply close any open surface and transform it into closed uh, surfaces, that's it. So these are basically what we are going to use it. So let's just start from a beginning. So what you're going to do, we are using geometries that will save points. So we have a set of points saved from our Rhino. And then polyline use this input point to create a polyline. And then after that, we extrude this polyline using a curve and director vector. And then this will cap the holes and then create a box geometry. So then let's just start from the beginning. So the first step is that we are going to uh, collect some points from our Rhino. So the first thing I wanna do is I just simply create a geometry. 
So this is actually geometry icon. And what you can do is you can either two way. First thing is you can create a single geometry by click. So I just click right mouse button and then you can actually change the name here. So I just call it, this one is point. I just call it one is I just changed the name. Uh, when your icon is orange color, meaning that there's some problem. And the problem here is that there's a no point saved inside of it. 이거는 오렌지 색으로 돼 있으면 이게 문제가 있다는 거고 uh, if you want to identify the problem click this balloon then it says floating parameter geometry failed to collect the data means that it doesn't have a data so please offer, please offer a, a data then you can change it to green 그래서 이거 포인트를 여기다 저장을 해줘야 되는데 저장을 하기 위해서는 이제 두 가지 방법이 있어요 so uh, you can actually select set one geometry meaning that you can add one point if, if i click this one and actually i can select a point here but let's set let's select this point here then this one turned into green meaning that it's okay 그리고, and then this one is actually green marked here if i click somewhere else it turned into red red means that there's a, some a rhino geometry in uh, grasshopper geometry in rhino document. 그리고 무슨 소리냐면 빨간색은 아 뭔가 그래스하퍼 오브젝트가 있다라는 뜻이고 if I click this point, this green is the specific point that this point one variable has it. 이거는 이제 특별한 그 번호 그러니까 특별한 게 있는 거를 말해주는 거예요. So so far, what we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point to create this block assembly so i'll just control c and control v and then i create eight more point something important when you use grasshopper try to organize them as neatly as possible uh, so point one, so let's change their names. This is point one. I change this name into point two. This one, point three. This one, point four. This one, point five. When I just bono make it clear, I just number them sequentially. sequentially. Then after name it correctly, I assign point for each uh, variable. So point two, it just still remembers the first one because we simply copy and paste it. So I set one geometry again and select the second point. Then you see that point one is below one, point two is changed the is position of it. So point three then one geometry, you go. Point four, set one geometry, 요 바꾸고. Point five, 그냥 반복 그냥 하는 거야. 바꾸고. Point six, so it's just simply repeating the process. Point seven, and point eight. 네, 그럼 여러분, 여러분들, so then now I have four eight points here. And actually I can, uh, this one is aligned, which is uh, uh, arrange them the same distance between icon. And here, oh, 아이고, 이거는 멀지 않은 건데. 여기서 이거 가운데 정렬하면 딱 가운데로 예쁘게. So I just align them in a center point with same distance. So uh, I want to show them nicely. And the next step is I want to create a polyline. So I have a point, so I can create a polyline based on this. So simply, I just double click on a canvas and then I type polyline. Then you have, I select the first from the bottom and then I'll connect all these points to vertices. And then as you see that it has another, it requires second input called closed. What it means is if, 
if this option is true, it will create a closed polyline. If the option is false, then it will create an open polyline. But we need a closed one because we, well, we want 3D print. So we need to offer a Boolean operation. So I type Boolean. And actually, there's a Boolean toggle. Boolean toggle is that if you just, Boolean toggle is a toggle that you can simply change true or false. But it's a, whatever you want to create, this will just offer that. So I, I, I need another uh, one. So I just locate it here and I change it to true. Then I show you how to connect each component. So I click the left side of a button, then you probably see that the uh, mouse cursor is changed slightly. And then I click here and then a line comes out of it. And then I, I bring it to the another point, another button of a closed. So this is how I connect one component to the another component. If you want to disconnect it, simply uh, move your cursor on top of this name and then right mouse button click and then actually you can disconnect it. And you can disconnect one of the line or you can disconnect select it. And actually you will see another option. Uh, I'll show you very quickly. And then here I want to connect this point one, two, three, four to here, but the order is very important. Sequences are very important because polyline create a line depending on the sequence of line. 이게 여러분 이게 연결할 때 중요한 게 뭐냐면 순서를 섞으면 이게 위치가 바뀌거든요. 그러니까 순서대로 넣어야 돼요. So I select first point. As you see that green, the location is color is green and connect this one to vertices. And now I will connect the second point. And when you do that, you need to press shift. So if I press a shift, you probably see a little tiny plus button. But if I don't press the shift button, it will replace the existing one. But if I press the shift button, it will connect them. However, the sequences are quite uh, mixed now. So I will disconnect all of them. So now here you will see another option called disconnect all. So I just disconnect everything and then connect from the top and then shift the button and connect one at a time. Uh, now you probably see that a new line is connected. Okay, now if you click polyline, you see that a green connect, a green polyline is generated. So there's nothing so much difficult. Any questions so far? So I will show you something, another interesting one, which is if I just double click here, and then I called, what I want to show you is actually this one. So this one is known as panel. You can drag it from parameters and input. You can drag it here. This one is basically um, exactly the same as print function in any computer programming language. If you want to see what's the value inside of it, uh, you're always welcome to use this panel. So if I drag it and then if I connect it here, it said all reference to point is saved meaning that there is a point inside of it. If I actually connect this one to here, it said polyline curve is generated. So this one is actually a way to check what's inside and what's outside. So now once I have a polyline, so now let's take a look at about this interface's side. 여기 잠깐 볼까요? 맨 왼쪽에 있는 거는 don't draw any preview geometry. So it'll show nothing. So not, not, there's no green here. Second one, draw wireframe preview geometry. So 이거는 그 wireframe으로 그린다라는 거고요. 그래서 지금 여기 보면 지금 빨간색으로 지금 다 그려져 있는데 다 빨간색이니까 안 보이는 거예요. 아, 이거 잠깐 바꿉시다. So I will change the color because everything is red. 
So I change the color into red. Uh, and then this one is draw shaded preview. So if there's a surface, it will draw the shaded view. Uh, this is green is interesting one. And then you will use uh, this icon very frequently. This one shows only selected objects only. So if I click it, it will only show clicked object only. So when I click point eight, it only shows the number eight point. And then I click polyline, it only shows the line of it. If I unclick it, now you see that you see actually this one, I will, okay, I will, I will hide it for temporarily. So now you see that you probably see red line and red point. I turned up the guideline layer. So now you can see red line, meaning that because I click draw frame and red line. So now you can see everything. And then when you select it, only selected this green line. However, if I click this green button, it's all hidden. And only visible, only selected icon will be visible. So there's a big difference here. So when you have small number of geometries, you may want to turn it off and you want to see always and then by clicking this, you can see selected one is green, unselected one is red. So you see the difference. But if you activate it, everything is hidden, but only selected is visualized as green. The difference is that if you have a simple thing, you can cover it. Then you can see it all. You can see it in the black. And if you choose something, you can change it in green. But everyone, this is the end. 진짜 많아져요. But very quickly, you'll have too many geometry and that will visually confuse you. So in that case, I, you may want to prefer to use this green button and only see selected icon only. So this one is very interesting one. The rest are actually uh, changing visualization setting. So you may play with it. It'll, you can change background color, you can change the line color as you did in layers. So now after polyline is created, so we want to ex uh, extrude it. So I will use the function called extrude. And then there are many different extrude. I just simply select the first one. And then this first one requires the first one direction. And the first one is base and second one is direction. And direction simply, actually, uh, you may need to have a line or a vector. So I just simply collect, uh, connect polyline and base, but it's so now it's orange color because direction is missing. Uh, there are two ways uh, you can do it. So first the thing you can directly, <clears throat> I, would, I will turn up green for now so you can see the red outline. So what you can do is you can, directly offer some direction into this function. So now what I do is I will click direction, right mouse button, then I can set one vector. Then actually it simply asks me, what is the direction that I want to draw? So, I ch so since I extruded to Z direction, I change view from top view to a front view or right view. And then I want to draw a line on a vertical way. You can see uh, from the perspective view. So now I want to do that. And then I want the length is about 20 millimeters. So I type 20 uh, here and enter. That it, I, then actually I can only move this vector 20 millimeter away from the zero point. And then by uh, pressing shift button, I can do either X direction or Z direction. And then when it is on G direction, I just type enter. Uh, I will try just one more time. So set one vector and then here 20 millimeter. Now I need to click it here. Then now it is green mark. If you see this one on a, perspective view now you see that this one is extruded however there is no cover either bottom lay bottom surface but now one thing quite uh, we know is 
there is no element, no visual element that shows the vertical vectors, which I don't really like it. I want you to always clearly show what are the inputs of a function and what are the outputs of functions. So instead of doing this, I want to create a, some kind of visual input parameter. So what I do is I click right mouse button on direction and then I click extract parameter. Then depending on the input, it will automatically generate a kind of variable or any icon, you can use it to visualize the inputs of it. And here in direction, I actually set one vector one more time. And then I just type 20 millimeter one more time. And then I do it here. Uh, looks like uh, the length was wrong. So I just do one more time. So from origin, I said 20 and enter and then click it. So now it's uh, 20 millimeter correctly. And this direction is actually saved the vector and extrude is actually completed. And finally, uh, extrusion of this one, I need to cap this geometry. So I double click on a canvas and I type cap holes and then and just simply create this one. And then I connect extrusion and B-wrap. And then now you see that this one is a uh, closed poly surface now. And then if you want to 3D print it, this one is simply visualization. You want visualization. Go. You go to 3D printing algorithm, visualization or geometry. If you want to, if you want to 3D print it, you need to transform this visualization into a completed geometry. To do that, you have to bake it, so called. So I just click bake, and then you can actually select a layer that this completed geometry will be saved on which layer. I just call, I just say, I select layer 03 and okay. Then now, if I click this one, everything is, uh, so now I actually click this green button. Now it's, everything is hidden. If I click it, this will be visualized. If I unclick it, it's hidden. But this one is actually actual geometry baked from the grasshopper. So 여기까지는 되게 쉽죠? Any questions so far? So this one is very clear. And then uh, I think there's no difficulty at all so far. But if you still have, if, if, do you think if I move too fast, just hold me? and then stop, interrupt me anytime. 여기까지 혹시 어려운 거 있는 사람 있어요? 네. 이거 실제 근데 여러분 해보면 조금 어려울 수도 있어요. Uh, you, may be, you may have some difficulties if you um, do it by yourself. So now, and then I'll just take a look at about some other display or in, uh, user interfaces. 약간 사용법을 조금 더 알려줄게요. So now you see that uh, this function, the variable has only single part, but function has input part and output part and name part. So this one is divided by three components, input, function, and output. And then if you right mouse button click, depending on each location, the menu will be changed. So when I right mouse button on vertices, you will see this kind of thing. And then if you right mouse button at the center of it, you see this kind of thing. And then if you see right mouse button on the right side, you saw also different thing. And then you probably see reverse flatten graph are common from left side of it and on the right side of it. So what it means, this one reverse flatten graph to simplify, I will, this one is the one of the most difficult part in grasshopper, so I'll explain it a little bit later. But if I describe it, the long story short, what simply reverse means it will reverse the sequence of this point one, two, three, four to in reverse way. So it will reverse eight, seven, six, five, four. Even though you connect it correctly, it will reverse the sequence. And then uh, the other things that require something other description. So I will just skip it for now. And then if you go to display, if you, if you see file, you can save the file and you can export the file. 
and those kind of thing. If you add it, you can do undo, redo, copy, paste, and those kind of thing. And then if you view it, uh, you can actually remote control panel. I'll, uh, this one is a little bit interesting, so I will explain a little bit later. And if you see uh, this play, uh, is actually something you need to know. So no preview wireframe shaded. And this one I explained it when I explained it here. So basically they are the same thing. And if you click this one, draw icon, it, you probably see that it, this one is all changed from text to icon. So when will you use this one? So imagine that you spend many hours with Grasshopper and now you imagine that you understand each function based on icon, actually you don't need to see the name of it. So many uh, professional users, uh, many experienced, experienced users prefer to reduce the size of icons so they can see more in one screen. 그러니까 이게 익숙해지면 글자는 이제 뭐다 알고 있으니까 필요 없잖아요. 그래서 아이콘으로 바꿔줘서 이 아이콘들의 사이즈를 줄일 수가 있어요. I can even make it even shorter by selecting uh, draw. So, and then if you click draw full name, you get, now this one is unchecked draw full name. So now even the input names are shortened and they're even, the first letter is used. So this one even minimize the icon of it. But this one is simply visualization style of each icon, that's it. But um, from now on, you may download someone else's code. And then probably it, there is a high probability that they look like this. And then you'll be quite a headache and then you'll be confused what, the, what they are. <laughs> and then in that case, you, all you have to do is simply go to display and draw full names and then it will show the names and then display draw icons. Then actually you can turn back into original beginner's form. Then you can actually understand it quite easily. But you go, uh, and then uh, for, you can actually fully change that. Uh, however, uh, this one will help you a lot by reducing or enlarge the icon of it. 요거는 그냥 단순히 여러분 사이즈를 줄이거나 크게 해서 아이콘을 빨리 이해할 수 있거나 천천히 이해할 수 있게 하는 거예요. Uh, simply a uh, draw fancy wire is just simply changing the wire style. That's it. So you will not, you may not use them so many times. 자, 여기까지 또 질문 있나요? 혹시, do you have any questions so far? So this is just interfaces. So now, so what we want to do is that, so your assignment this week is you need to remake your assembly using Grasshopper. That's your this week's assignment. The reason why I recommend, so there are two occasions. Do you think there are some parts that need to be changed frequently? I strongly recommend to use Grasshopper. But if there is, when you think that, oh, this one is already fixed the design, then I don't want to change. I, I think that there will be very small possibility to change that. Just simply, you just drew, you made it by hand. But if you think you may need to change them later, Grasshopper automates the changing process and then it'll save your time tremendously. So from now on, 여러분들 나중에 뭔가 바꿔야 된다. 그럼 그래서 쓰는 게 굉장히 유용해요. 근데 요새 안 바꾸는 게 없어요. But uh, to be honest, there is no such design that doesn't really change at all. Everything will be changed. For example, uh, this one is triple A battery. Uh, 볼수 있나 모르겠네. So this is very common triple A battery. How do you design AAA battery? So let's say you have a cylinder and you have, uh, so imagine that even the simplest form of battery has a cylinder and some negative side of design and positive side of design. So let's imagine that you wanna, I mean, this is hypothetical, 가정적이긴 한데, let's imagine that you want to design uh, battery and battery connector. And then let's imagine that you are quite sure that you want to use two AAA battery, then it's quicker to design Rhino by hand and that's it done. However, what if you, mean, you need to change 
two triple A's to four triple A's, or why do you need to change triple A's to double A batteries? For example, let's say that uh, battery sizes. So now, as you see that there are all kinds of different battery sizes, And then let's say that you want to design a battery case. And then if you actually design AAA battery, you can parametrically change from AA to quadra A or A23, or you can change it to a C type, D type, or AA, AAA. So you can actually change parametrically so quickly simply by changing slide. So these days actually, um, there is no such a product that do not change. For example, if you think about cars, have you know about car design? So car design these days, basically there is only one car. And if you have a one car design that can be transformed into a compact car, mid-size sedan, full-size sedan, and then it is transformed to compact SUV, mid-size SUV and large size SUV. So basically there's only one car. So this is known as modular design, car platform. So what it means is that if you have a one car design that is shifted to all other different forms of cars. One great example so Volkswagen is a great example of it. Basically, Volkswagen has probably nine other sub-brands. Uh, uh, what are the Volkswagen, Audi, I think Volkswagen, Audi, Lamborghini, and Bentley, and Seat. Uh, let's see, uh, Volkswagen are sub-brands. So these are all Volkswagen's car company. And then basically they share car design. Basically, there's no reason why not to share it. So when you design something, in these days, design means modular design and parametric change is the basic notions of it. And Grasshopper is a kind of a key tool to support your modular design or modular changes very uh, quickly. So again, so now coming back to Rhino one more time. So coming back to Rhino. So now let's see that from now on, instead of using this fixed design, I want to change, let's kind of change first this number three and number four point curve. Let's imagine that what if we can move left and right? So by doing so, we can actually change the width of a joint block. So now I just kind of move out 0.4 and 0.3 to, visual, to visualize it clearly. And then I want to move them together. So to move it, uh, I just kind of search with move keyword. And then this one, this function move, enable us to actually move these two geometries. So here, uh, unfortunately, I have to disconnect everything. So disconnect or, and then I connect point one and shift point two. And then we need to connect this one, but I connect from point three and point four and then I connect this geometry to this one. By doing so, we can connect three and four after one and two, and then connect five and six, seven and eight. So now uh, this one is now, from now it's movable and it asks you a motion. And motion is actually, you can do a lot of different things. So I said one vector here, and then I just freely make one motion here. Then as you see that if these two points are here, and then if you see polyline, now you see that this one is transformed. 
and it extrusion is actually quite different from now on. So now uh, this one is actually, uh, these two points are moved this far. Uh, I just delete this one from now on. So now I want to, instead of moving any direction, I simply move uh, X direction only. To do that, I can limit uh, this motion using uh, unit X or Y, Z, or you, need, you can actually either move it X direction or Y direction or Z direction only. So I move, I, I use unit X. I connected this one to motion. And from now on, okay, I'll just click this one. I see that. So now this one is moving X axis direction only. And all I have to do is offer a factor. So here, I simply use a zero number and then it will, once I type zero, it will automatically give you a number slider bar. And then if you, if I connect this zero to unit X, as you see that this one is actually moving. Can you see that? This one is moving, but this one is a little bit too far. So probably I may want to move this one left side or right side. So I can, I want to set the range of it. So I just simply right mouse button click. I go to values and minimum value one. And make sure that you click this green button. Otherwise it will not change the value. And then I change the value from plus to minus by clicking this icon and then maximum value. I type one and green button. Also make sure that you press this commit changes, otherwise it will not update it. So now this one will move from minus one and one. However, this one only moves integer way. So I need to change it, this one to more float value. So to change that, the easiest actually wait. So now you can change the slider type floating point, integers, odd number, even number. So then I need to change it to float point. Then actually you can change the value very slightly. And now let's think about that. We are not really uh, reducing the value one side. We have to change the now we are only moving this is three and four, but now actually we also know that five and six need to be also symmetrically moved upside and down. So now I want to take out number five and six. And then I kind of copy this one and paste it. And then Unfortunately, we have to reconnect this one again. So I just disconnect all and I need to connect one and two and three, F three and four comes from here and five and six comes from here. And then we need to connect seven and eight a little bit later. So seven, and eight comes here. And then five and six need to be connected to the geometry. However, what happened is that it, when unit X is positively moved, what we know is that we all need to do is we simply reverse this value. So what I do is I find, I try to find negative and then this comes here and then the result is going to the motion. And by doing so, when I move it, I, I don't know whether you see that this one is now symmetrically moving in and out. Okay, so, and then now let's clean up a little bit. So this is something, so I will give this code to you. Probably it will be, uh, upload it to the, the same Google folder. Play with this one. However, your job <laughs> is 
make the female block using this one. So uh, next week, probably you'll figure out that your the first design that you did last week will not work, may or may not. So you have to actually change slightly the size of male block or female blocks width of it. And then uh, you need to measure how much distance you need to manipulate it. And using this grasshopper code, uh, you need to correct it. And probably what will happen this week is that uh, you may change too much, so it may just hold it, it may just fall down. And then next week, probably we need to actually redesign it. But this one is actually kind of very common process that you have to change them again and 3D print them again. So this is over fabrication process. Uh, so actually what I want you to do is, um, you will have a lot of problems. So, but now let's clean up. Uh, cleaning up is the most important one. So let's clean up together. And then I hope you to have this kind of uh, visualization together. So first of all, all right. So uh, I'm highly sure that you know what are comments. So comments are a text for human being to understand it clearly. So let's add comment. And to add comment, you are going to use Scribble. So Scribble is just text that Grasshopper will ignore, but this one only you are going to see. And then the programming style that we are going to use here is, are you familiar with PEP8? PEP8 is Python style guide. I think it's a six now, six or eight. So I will show you one more time. Uh, but uh, I will show them later just for now. Okay, let's just, you can double click to change the text. So now let's say that, let's give a good name. So let's say this one is um, Lego Brick Code. So this is the title that, the title of this code. And then a comment supposed to have a list who write it. So writer, for now, probably your name. So for now, I just say that my name. And when you made it, date, uh, March 7. And when you write a code, you need to identify what is the function, main function of this code. So main function is that create, uh, mail, uh, this one is basically create a mail uh, Lego uh, block. And then what are the most common things that you need to include in comment? Input, input parameters. What are input parameters here? Parameters, points. What are output parameters? Basically, a block. So these are actually basic functions that basic contents that any um, comment, the top comments supposed to include. So I just said, okay. So now this one is basically the basic comments for this. So please include this uh, initial comment here. Then second thing you have to do is clean up this code so you can actually understand it very quickly. So far, what I see here is that this one is the output, and then this is the input of this output, and this one is the input, and these two are the input of this one. And as I see that uh, uh, these are all the inputs of this function. And then this function has this one and probably has this and this, and these are the input of this function.
and probably this one may line up with this two. And then this is the input of this code. So now visually we understand, we don't know what they are. However, we know that this is the first input, which is the, the gap between those two brick. And these are the first input of this moving. And these are the input of moving function. And these are extrude and this is cap. And one good suggestion for you to have is create a geometry one more time. So this variable will have it as an output. So this is our final output and this is our initial output. And probably we can actually change them a little bit like this, representing that these are our really the initial point of it. But this, this one is up to you. So kind of think about how to design that your grasshopper code that you can understand it as, as quickly as possible as soon as you see this code. But for now, actually, I prefer actually this one more. So, oh, I know that I designed how much I want to change it. And these are kind of temporary input that select a point. And then after that, what you can do is, again, as I show you before, I selected these and you can actually line up the same distance. And uh, this one is left side. Oh, okay, so now, oh. I want to probably line up like this. And then I want to line up this one. And also same distance, also lined up. So now this one is extremely clean way of organizing your code. And even you can actually make it more insightful by adding more scribble. So let's imagine that, consider that this one is your algorithm. You can use a scribble. So I would say step one, change distance. So now this one, you know what to do. Step one, change distances. And control C V, and then step two, select point, C V, step three, then create a polyline this one step four create on extrusion The five, create a cap. Actually, this one create a both. Uh, okay, let me double check. So, oh, this one is extrusion. Uh, oh, select point. Actually, polyline is going back here. So create caps. Create an extrusion. Cap. And this is three. And then this one is select point or select and moves point. Is walk to here and then check, uh, this is final output. So also I can change this, I can actually line up this one you know, horizontally. So this one is, I would say, almost complete and well-organized code that if you have this kind of level of detailed code later, 
you can save them, so you can change, use them, you can use it later, you can very quickly recycle them later. And any coding, actually, the purpose of coding is not really developing it. Rather, the purpose of coding is actually recycling. Because the, 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 because the coding, the power of coding is the acceleration process comes when you actually recycle them, not really develop them. So uh, this is a kind of the level of code I'm expecting from you. Even, <laughs> I can even organize them more. And then uh, you probably you save it. And then you can submit this code to the Google Drive. Now let's do one thing more. So you probably all know that what is the definition of function? So the function is, if I, the function, what is the definition of function? When you have a lot of codes, very kind of, you have a long code, you can actually group them in a meaningful, in a kind of meaningful groups. So now what we can do is we can, I, I can select the whole the code inside and then you can go to edit. You can actually go to group them. You can actually create a meaningful chunk of it. So now you understand that, oh, this is the whole block that I need to create it. So this one is kind of visually organizing your code. So this one is almost like pseudo code or skeletal code that you can understand it in the whole process in a very quick time. Another thing you can do is you can select them if you go to edit and cluster, but be careful about it. I would save it now because you cannot really undo it once you clustered it. The cluster is you select them and then you can edit, you can cluster it. You all the process we have done so far become one function. So here you can actually name that is uh, mail block design code. So everything is encapsulated now. So done. So actually this is great feature. And if you just, if you want to see the inside of it, just simply double click it and then you have everything here. And then if you want to go outside, simply click this box icon and save and close, then you can come outside of it. So if, you're, if your code become extremely complex, you can actually cluster them, cluster them, cluster them, and then actually you can manage your code in a very neat way. And, or you, and then actually, once you, it is completed, you don't really need to know. And then once you change it, and then you bake it, and it's done. So uh, this is something you are going to do this week. And then we have no class this Wednesday. So you have a full week. <laughs> uh, this Wednesday is election day. So I hope you have fun with this code so far. Uh, it will be really fun, I have to say. Everybody loves this grasshopper. And then I'm highly sure that you learned uh, a semester or at least two semesters of programming course. So it will be very easy for you. Uh, any questions so far? And then here is the problem. Uh, the limitation of Grasshopper is that it's really difficult to go on cluster lit. So that's the tricky thing. One way of doing it is probably you can actually save it. You can save it here, Control C, and coming out, and then you can paste it here. That's one way of moving outside of it. But there's no way to undo this cluster before coming back to cluster. So be careful about it. So make sure that you save your file into the two different types of format. One is before cluster, the other is after cluster. And then I would prefer to have two files all the time. Okay, 한번 cluster로 만들면 이 uncluster 하는 방법이 없어요. 
방법은 그냥 클러스터 들어가서 카피 앤 페이스트해서 나오는 방법밖에 없기 때문에 저는 항상 그 클러스터 버전과 언클러스터 버전 두 가지를 항상 같이 갖고 있어요. 네, 그래서 이거를 여러분들의 숙제는 이거는 제가 좀 이따가 그 같은 구글 폴더에 올려줄 거고 so I, so I upload this code to the Google Drive. So have fun with it. Or you can start from a scratch by watching the Zoom recorded today's course. But your job is not doing a male version. Your job is doing female version. You got it? 네, 혹시 뭐 질문 있나요? Um, what type of file should we submit? So file type is supposed to be Rhino file and Grasshopper file. And to 3D print your file, you need a STL file, you need a Cura file. Okay, I'll, so three types of file. So I will also upload the assignment, the list of files that okay. you have. Thank you. Okay. Have fun. This will be very uh, interesting and very, I have to say, this is really powerful software. So when you design any uh, Thing, this will be extremely useful. And if you are, if you want to spend more time uh, learning uh, this kind of uh, program, the best one so far is Grasshopper Primer. 이게 한국어 버전이 있는지는 모르겠어요. But there are many different languages of Grasshopper Primer. Uh, so far, English. Spanish, Dutch, and Russian. <laughs> so uh, you select either one you like. Uh, one of the trickiest part when you learn Grasshopper is, is data structure, that which I didn't explain today because it will be a long story. That the data, but if I can explain it very shortly, it uses so called tree structure. So if I kind of quickly introduce you, it is a kind of nested uh, list, what I mean by it. It's not matrix and it's not, and then so now you, you can convert this tree structure into plain list and then you frequently keep back and forth. And then that's the one of the trickiest part in learning Grasshopper or other than that, it's really user friendly and it's really powerful uh, because what you can do is you can combine this with Python using this feature. So I'm coming back to uh, Grasshopper. So what you can do is if you go to set, you can use either, uh, if you go to mess, you can either use the C sharp, I will explain this one later, Python and Visual Basic.net. So basically this one has all the powerful uh, programming languages inside of it. And all you have to do is just simply double click it and fill the code inside of it. And then actually you can use it freely. So you can actually input PyTorch or deep learning, neural network, anything or OpenCV. You can combine any powerful Python library with this. And of course, the bad side of it is it's really user friendly. However, is this one is actually one of the slowest performing program that you can use. So that's the kind of bad side of it. And there's also since this grapper, grapper, grasshopper is running inside of Rhino, it has also very uh, small size of memory limitations. That's another bad side of it. But other than that, this one is extremely useful for any beginners in 3D modeling, designing, and AR, VR, for any kind of uh, model making, this one is extremely powerful. And then you can search so many applications. If I just show you just a little bit of it, 아주 조금만 보여줘도, 굉장히 많아요. So when you laser cut it, it can automate the fabrication file. So you can make an extremely complicated shape with very little effort or basically it's your time saver or effort saver or labor saver, energy saver. 
basically you can do a lot of things with this. Oh, uh, and then this one is uh, simply in architectural way, but you also you can design uh, robotics or any other application with this. Uh, I, I just personally, this is a, um, yeah, it's almost being used almost anywhere in the world. Any top university actually they use this one. Even MIT C sales, MIT C sales is computer science department at MIT and MIT Media Lab, Harvard Architect. Architecture, Harvard Engineering, Design School, every university uses this one. 네. 근데 아직 우리나라에는 되게 늦게 퍼지고 있어요. 자, 우리나라는 uh, so far in Korea it's not really not wide spreading because uh, I believe the main reason is for mechanical engineers they who want to use Hyundai or Samsung, Hyundai, Hyundai motor cars, they because they use solid works. And I think well, that's one of the reasons. 네, 그래서 이거 여러분 일주일 동안 재밌게. So now for next week, have fun with this, <웃음> and see you next Monday. Uh, that's it for today. 네, 혹시 뭐 질문 있는 사람, any questions so far? 편을 기록해 주신 거 유튜브에 올려 주십니까? 네, 이거 유튜브에 이거 되게 줌인데 줌이 이거 한번 프로세싱하고. 보통 저녁 정도에 올라오더라고요. So normally, once I record Zoom in during class, the post-processing process will finish at the end of today. So I will upload it probably end of today or tomorrow sometimes. But I try as quickly as possible. 근데 아마, 아, so the link, and, uh, the link will be uploaded to the Facebook uh, as I did. For the week two, so week there will be a new post for week three, uh, and then my rep, my suggestion, uh, go to Facebook, to our class Facebook website. 여기 가시면 makerspace 있잖아요. Go to makerspace and go to recommendation. So I kind of change the setting and then I change all my class recording will be inside this recommendation uh, setting. So your the week two lecture is also uploaded to this uh, recommendation, one of the top menu of it. 그리고 여러분 그 추천 누르시면 여기에 제일 최근 거가 아마 올라가 있을 거예요. 시간 순으로. 여러분 제 수업은 다 여기 recommendation만 보시면 돼요. 네, 이런 식으로 lecture video, just like the last week uh, lecture, this will be uploaded like this. Probably a new post will be on at, uh, by the end of tomorrow lunchtime, probably. 네, 뭐 질문 또 있으신 분? 음, okay, uh, okay, that's it for today. All right, have fun the rest of the week. 네, 여러분 수고하셨습니다. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, bye. 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 Bye.